بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله kindness and joining the ties of kinship is one of the most important <coughs> duties of a mu'min. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has coupled this great form of ibadah and this great form of subservience to him and excellent manners towards the creation with Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it along with Tawheed. And likewise, there are many lessons in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this regard. And from the Hadith of Mughira ibn Shu'bah, وعن مغيرة وعن مغيرة وعن مغيرة ابن شعبه شعبه رضي الله تلا عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال. إن الله حرم عليكم عقوق عقوق الأمهات ووعد بنات ومنع وهات وكري لكم قيل وقال وكثرة السؤال وإضاعة المال متفق عليه إن الحديث عظيم دات البخاري المسلم the hadith narrated by Mughira ibn Shu'bah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah has made it unlawful for you to be undutiful to your mothers. So in this first ibarah from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it shows us the importance of the mother, the manzil of our, our mothers, and that most of us don't give them their rights. Most of us don't give our mothers their haq, treating them with the respect that they deserve, listening to them, being patient with them, even if they are perhaps at times being difficult with us. Most of us don't, don't understand that and don't realize that that's an excellent and great form of ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited aquq al-umahat to be disobedient to mothers. And this is inclusive towards even our other elders, our grandmothers and our aunts and so forth. And that it shows us that we have to strive our best to be obedient and listen and be patient with the difficulties that might arise even when they are being impatient with us or they are being difficult with us they just have that haq and manza that Allah and Jalla has given them so Allah has made it unlawful for you to be undutiful to your mothers to bury your daughters alive so here this is a ishara or this is showing us to a pre-Islamic custom with the Arabs. I don't know of other communities that practice this. We know the Chinese uh, also had some severe customs with regards to girls and other cultures, Koreans and some Asian cultures, and Japanese, the Japanese. And so, but the Arabs were known for this wicked, evil custom of bearing their daughters alive. And for those of us who have children and who have daughters, we can't even fathom that. Because you love your baby girl so much, you enjoy playing with them. You enjoy making them happy. You enjoy when they're uh, running around and they're doing what they do. And their attachment towards you. 
So we can't even fathom a people being so misguided and so far away from the fitra in this way that they buried their girls alive because they thought there was no benefit in them. They were surely a misguided people full of wickedness. But Islam enlightened them. Islam came to raise them from jahiliyyah to the light of Islam. And dhulamat al nur from darkness to light. To refuse others' dues and to demand things from others. And he hates for you engaging in gossip. Asking many questions about people's affairs and squandering wealth. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Muhammad, there are many benefits in this hadith. So we already mentioned to bury your daughters alive. What does this mean for us? Perhaps we can understand from this hadith as well that although this practice is generally non-existent in this time to where people are physically burying their daughters alive except for those people who are just so far away from human fitra that they destroy their own children. But perhaps this is also that we can find insight in this hadith to also give the rights to our daughters, their rights to in studies, in ta'aleem, in being taught the deen, in being taught the worldly knowledge that they need to suffice them. And also just to do those things which is going to better their lives and help them and assist them and make their in making their way in this difficult life that we live in. And then the Prophet said to refuse others' dues and to demand things from others. So the Prophet said also that we have to give others their rights, not just our relatives, but everyone their rights. And this is incredibly important for us that when we have people who work for us, when we are the employers, when we're in a position to help and assist people, do your best to give them their rights immediately and don't hesitate. Likewise, to demand things from others, to be demanding and always being asking and begging and, and demanding from others. So the mu'min, these are the sifat of the mu'min, is the opposite of this. That instead they're the ones who are giving. Instead they're the ones who are kind to their children. Instead, they're the ones who are respectful to their, uh, to their mothers and to the women in their family. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, وَكَرِيَ لَكُمْ قِيلَ وَقَعَدْ This is imperative. And he hates for you. Gossip, asking about this one, spreading lies about this one, speaking about this one. And how much more during the holy month of Ramadan should we be cautious that we should not be speaking about others? And this is a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam to strive your best to guard your tongue. Do your best not to speak about this one, oh, so-and-so, this happened, and he, this and that and the other. Oh, that sister, huh, she such and such and such and such, she does this. We found out this is haram about her, and we were you know, want to share this with others. Or even, and this has even a greater uh, station, and we don't realize this, about speaking about the, the ulama, or speaking about the students of knowledge, and belittling them, and spreading evil about them, because they are even more favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has love for them, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them fiqh fi deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man bihi Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. So those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given good to, that means He wants good for them because He's given them fiqh fi deen. And then you and I go and belittle those people of knowledge and speak about those, belittle of no, uh, those people of knowledge and spread lies about those people of knowledge. How many, look at now with the social media, you have people cutting and pasting 
clips from Duat and putting it in their videos and saying the most wicked things about them, making it like cartoons, making ridicule of them. And these are perhaps people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Perhaps these are from the awliya of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you want to fight the, the awliya of Allah? You want to speak ill of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You want to spread lies about the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you think your station's going to be with your Lord subhanahu? What do you think, how do you think you are going to be rewarded in this life as well as hereafter? Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate you in this life and raise up those du'at. And perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate you in the hereafter. So be careful of gossip. And likewise, the Prophet also mentioned in asking too many questions. And sometimes this can be in the situ a situation where we're asking so many questions about the deen and we need to know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us on one hand, ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. But sometimes we ask about things that are, are perhaps never going to happen or things that totally don't concern us for the sake of obtaining a strange answer. Or sometimes we ask questions in order to get something that we want from others or to humiliate others. Or we make a general question and apply it to specific individuals in order to belittle those people. And in order to say, Sheikh so-and-so spoke about so-and-so. Sheikh so-and-so made a fatwa that so-and-so is misguided and a misguider. So we have to be careful of the kathar to su'al that have no benefit. These are the questions that have no benefit. Likewise, sometimes we make it difficult upon a whole people that the people have a particular custom that they do that in general is mubah. It's a custom that's generally lawful, but there's no ajr in it and there's no harm in it. But yet we ask students of knowledge, or we ask the ulama in order to take, in order to make things difficult upon those people. A well-known practice amongst the people, but we want to cause confusion. So the qas, the intention behind your question, should be to gain ilm, should be to gain benefit, to have the spreading of knowledge, not to make difficulty upon the people. And lastly, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it impermissible to waste wealth. So this Sahabat of Allah reminds me, we already know that we should not spend extravagantly and just waste, you know, throwing away money, throwing it away on muharamat, on things that are impermissible, doing things like gambling and, and what, whatever the case may be. Likewise, part of our wealth is even taking care of our resources. We live in Saudi Arabia and here one of the forms of wealth in a sense or property or something that's very uh, valuable here is water, water resources. And this is around the world in fact. There's a scarcity of the resource of clean, good drinking water. So when we make wudu, we should not make israf, we should not be wasteful. We should use the water sparingly out of your tap. You could even perhaps turn it off for each individual aspect of wudu when you're washing your hands, then turn it off while you're wiping your hands, while you're washing your hands. Uh, then, you know, you're making the mother mother with thin shop. Or you could perhaps you have water collected in a water container in order to save that wealth. Or perhaps when you're making ghusl, to make it short and use what's sufficient from the water. So this is very important that we're not wasteful because there are many people in the world, many, who don't have clean water, who don't have access to tap water, clean, and do not have drinking water that's acceptable. And so we don't want to be of those who waste our wealth and waste the provisions that Allah has given us, the ni'am of Allah 
And we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Eliza or Jill. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the Shaitan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Nabi Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam.